So we've got Groove Agent 1 all set up on a MIDI track, as you can see here. Okay, so we're just going to have a quick listen. And as you can see, I've finished building the drum kit from the last video. And I've also finished building the map for it. Okay, as you can see at the moment, there's no drum map. So what I'm going to do is we're, we're going to look at Beat Designer this time, which we've got an instance loaded already. So we'll load another instance. And if you have a look on the left-hand column, you see there are names uh, for each instrument. And these at the moment, as you can hear, don't correspond to what's actually loaded into Groove Agent 1. Okay, so if we go to the instance... Um, no, before we do that, we'll load the drum map, um, which we've created earlier which for this instance is beat design map 2 okay so if you see here this is exactly how groove agent 1 is laid out which we did in the previous video okay close that so we've got a drum map loaded and we're going to load beat designer i've already prepared one it's just lurking behind there okay get rid of that for a moment Okay, so this is Beat Designer. This is what we use for building beats with. And as you can see on the left hand side now, our new drum map corresponds exactly to what we've loaded into Groove Agent 1. Okay, so you'll also notice that it's, it's what's called a matrix um, sequencer. And you've got rows and you've got columns. Let's just maximize that. So what I'm going to do now is just show you how it all works. So I've just selected one measure here, which will correspond to one measure in Beat Designer. Okay. So we've actually... Ah. Now, if you listen to the click and you watch the light in Beat Designer, and if you watch the time cursor in Cubase, you will see that they correspond um, exactly to one another. You just watch the two okay so we've selected one measure now if we look up in the top left hand corner okay you can see that it's the number of steps for the pattern which is set to 16 and it's subdivided into 16th beats so it's four beats to the bar as you can see there and it's split down into 16 subdivisions so you've got four notes to each beat okay so we're going to start doing some programming and just switch the click down a little bit in volume is it a bit loud that's better so if we just click on the kick cell we've got a kick drum oops wrong one we'll snare there Don't like that. Nope. That's more like it. Okay, it snares in. Right, that's interesting there. If we click, hold, and left drag, we can actually change the level of each MIDI event. Which is really, really useful. Also, if you click um, in the upper area of that cell, it will give you a higher level. Click at the bottom, it gives you a lower level. Nice little touch. Okay, so now I'm thinking we could possibly do it with some hi-hats. So we'll pick the closed hi-hat. And I want an eighth note kind of feel. So it's going to be every other cell. Just varying the velocities a little bit because it, it has a nice little variation to it. Okay. Oh, it's, 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 it sounds a little bit robotic and a bit stiff. So what I'm going to do is just make the snare a little bit later. It makes it a little bit lazier and it's just got a little bit more of a groove to it. Make that one louder. A bit quieter. Okay, going to do the same with the hats as well. Just get those feeling a little bit later and a bit groovier. 
I'm going to swap that for an open one. And you can hear that choking uh, when we set up our ch choke group in the last video. Fancy a bit of tambourine now as well. I've got two tambourines set up. I've got a hard sound and a soft sound because I want it to sound like someone really shaking a real tambourine. And I want that on 16th notes. So I'm going to alternate them so it actually does sound like someone shaking a tambourine. So if we go through and just finish doing these, a bit loud. Okay, we've got a tambourine. Same again, so pushing a little bit too much, I want it a little bit lazier. And I'm gonna make the soft one a little bit later than the hard one. Because humans aren't perfect with the timing. I've also got some nice 808 congas set up. So just start to add a little bit of percussion. I've also got all the individual drum sounds split to individual channels out um, of Groove Agent 1 into Cubase as well. So obviously each sound has got its own effects um, on it, but we'll probably be looking at that in another video. I've got some cymbal set up as well. There are more cymbals that we're going to be using in this video, but they will probably come in the next video um, when we get into editing in the drum editor. Beat design is great for just throwing down your, your very basic beats, um, which is how I do it, and then I tweak them within Cubase's drum editor. So, to keep things interesting, you're not using the same pattern all the time, I'm just going to copy that pattern and select a new key there, and paste the pattern. So I'm just going to make a very slight variation on this pattern, which keeps the track interesting all the way through. So we're going to put an open hi-hat there, and turn it down a little bit. And have a listen. Okay. So that very easily is how to program a beat. Now, I know your next question is going to be, how do I get that into the MIDI track in Cubase? Now, this is how you do it. You select the, um, the measure that you want to send the beats to and just hit fill loop with pattern. So if you keep an eye on this. There you go. If you do want to play it back, though, make sure you switch Beat Designer off first um, in the Inspector pane. So we're going to move on to the next one. And we're going to select our previous beat that we programmed. Same again. We're going to fill loop with pattern. There we go. Obviously, if you select more measures, say you select two measures, then it will copy it to two measures. It will copy it to how many measures you select. Now, I don't like the order of these. I'll make sure we switch Beat Designer off because we don't want to tri double trigger the notes. Have a listen. Okay, now, really, I want the open hat to come on the second measure. So what I'm going to do is just drag this measure back so that comes first. Adjust the loop. Yeah, that's what I'm after. Okay. So I can now drag... Oh, get rid of those for now. Okay. So we're going to go back to Beat Designer. And here are some patterns that I've programmed previously um, to work with the backing track that I've also written just to show you all in context and how it works. Okay, and this is the backing track that I've already done. So, we go back to the first beat that I've written earlier. Pretty similar to what we've just looked at. I'm going to select the measure that I want to drop those beats into. Oh, just switch Beat Designer off a sec so I can show you the backing track by itself. This is what it sounds like. Okay, so now we're going to start dropping beats over it and see how it sounds and how it transforms the track. I'm 
personally, I think a good drum rhythm track is the one of the most important things of any track. It's like the foundation for it. Get that right, you know, and the rest comes easy. If you get it wrong, it's like a house. It's going to fall down if the foundations aren't right. And that's what that sounds like. So on to the next measure. Select the next measure um, that I've written to come after that one. Same again, fill it with pattern. Move it out of the way. Okay. So let's have a quick listen. Sounding good. On to the next one. Okay, you should be getting the idea of this by now. And just fill it with pattern. Sounding good. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on now and I'm going to finish um, just the track off and I'm going to lay the rest of the beats that I've prepared in advance. So now we've got our finished drum track, um, or finished for now. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at just fine tweaking stuff. This is close enough for now. Obviously, it need, need the mix needs finishing off. It needs little details putting into it. But we're going to look to that in the next video. Um, this is the finished thing. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see a few more. Um, please give us a thumbs up. And thanks for watching. I mean